After attending a friend's engagement party, Morgan Huxley entered the Oaks Hotel a little after 1am on September 8, 2013, for one more beer. At 1.28am, Huxley was informed that the bar was closing, so he swung off his stool and made the short walk to his neutral bay apartment. His flatmate, Jean Redmond, woke up after hearing thumping noises. She got up, closed her bedroom door, and put on some music to drown out the sounds. Fifteen minutes later, she heard two knocks at the door downstairs, and assumed it was a friend of Morgan's. She went back to sleep before being awoken again at 2.30am by strange muffled noises, followed by thuds and screeches. Concerned about Morgan, Jean got up and went to his room. She turned on the lights and was horrified at what she had discovered. The 31-year-old was on the floor, covered in blood, with his shorts pulled down exposing his genitals. Panicked, Jean rushed back to her room and mistakenly dialed 999, the emergency number for the United Kingdom. She called her boyfriend who contacted emergency services. When paramedics arrived, Morgan Huxley was still alive, but barely. He was rushed to Royal North Shore Hospital and declared deceased at 3.30am, suffering 28 stab wounds to his neck, back, arms and shoulders. His left and right corroded arteries were severed and the tip of the knife was lodged in his skull. A search was done around the neighbourhood but the murder weapon as well as Huxley's phone weren't located. In the following days after the gruesome murder, police conducted interviews with Morgan Huxley's friends, former girlfriends and colleagues to determine who may have wanted to harm the marine mechanic. He had recently dated a woman who he had described as a psycho and had also been having disputes at work. Investigators watched Huxley's walk home with the help of CCTV cameras in the area. They spotted a man wearing chef's pants and a black shirt walking and sometimes running behind Morgan. The man was identified as Daniel Kelsall, a 20-year-old kitchen hand and cleaner from the Sydney Cooking School. Kelsall agreed to a police interview. He spent 90 minutes at the North Sydney Police Station on the night of September 24. He was shown the CCTV footage, and when asked why he was running behind Huxley, he answered, It was cold. Mum always tells me if you're cold, go for a jog. Detectives questioned why Kelsall was heading in that direction as it wasn't the quickest route home. He explained that he was going back to the cooking school to make sure that he had turned the lights off. He revealed that he had briefly interacted with Morgan earlier at an Easy Mart before Huxley went to the Oaks Hotel, but never spoke to him on his walk home. Kelsall was asked if he would give a DNA sample, and after a short pause, he politely declined. Although investigators thought that he seemed strange, they didn't believe he was Morgan Huxley's murderer, and continued looking into other persons of interest. Then, just two days later, detectives got an unexpected phone call. It was Daniel Kelsall. I wasn't telling you the entire truth, Kelsall said. You know when I said I hadn't spoken to that guy? Well, I did. The investigators conducted a second interview with Kelsall in the parking lot of a Woolworths. The young man stated that he had spoken to Morgan on his walk home. He told detectives, I started talking to him, and he was upset and depressed, so I said to him, Can I cheer you up? He claimed that the pair had consensual sex at Morgan's apartment, and after Morgan had went to sleep, he left. As he exited the unit, he saw a blonde woman walking towards it. He broke into tears, saying, I think that's why he got murdered. When asked why he didn't report this earlier, he told detectives that he was scared. It was a shocking story to say the least, but detectives deemed it just that, a story. Daniel Kelsall confessed to being with the victim shortly before he was murdered. He became the prime suspect in the murder of Morgan Huxley. Police searched his bedroom and took the black shoulder bag he was carrying on the night of the murder, as well as his clothes, laptop and two knives from the kitchen. After forensic tests were completed, Kelsall was charged with murder an indecent assault on October 4, 2013. His DNA was found on Huxley's penis, spots of blood were found on his shoulder bag which he attempted to wash off, and his fingerprints were located on Morgan's bedroom door. When examining his laptop, police found gruesome autopsy photos, as well as over 30 computer-generated pornography images depicting children. Detectives contacted Kelsall's GP, 
and learned that 15 months prior, the suspect had revealed to her that he was having intrusive thoughts of killing someone with a knife on his way home at night. A month later, he told his psychiatrist, I had thoughts of killing someone else, for the thrill of it, it sounds psychopathic, no idea why. Going to jail would depend on whether I wanted to get caught. He would probably be totally random, with a knife, I could hide the body. Kelso told a friend he was afraid of walking home at night following Morgan Huxley's murder. After the police interview, his boss confronted him and asked if he had murdered Morgan. Kelso looked him straight in the eye and denied having any involvement, but did say, If I did do it, there's no way they'll ever catch me. He was an avid watcher of forensic shows such as CSI. Born in Wellington, New Zealand, Daniel Kelso was adopted at birth and was raised in a loving upper middle class home. He attended a small private school and had dreams of becoming a chef. His parents moved to Sydney, Australia and he joined them a few years later. He was variously diagnosed with Asperger's, bipolar, autism and depression by different doctors and psychologists. At one point he was taking Seroquel, an antipsychotic medication, but his parents believed that it was making him dopey and not improving their son's condition. His boss stated, The whole time he never raised his voice, even in Gordon Ramsay type situations. On March 4, 2015, the murder trial would begin. Daniel Kelsor stated that he struck up a conversation with Morgan Huxley as the pair walked home. He'd been smiling while we were conversing, and he lost his smile a bit and said he'd had a stressful week, claimed Kelso. During their conversation, Morgan discussed not getting with anyone that night, and Kelso asked him, Do you want to do things with me? He said Huxley agreed, and the pair went to his bedroom. Kelso stated that he fondled Huxley for about 10 minutes until he felt someone hit him hard on the head. He realised that someone else was in the room. It looked like this other person and Mr. Huxley were fighting. I then got out of there. I stood up and ran out, he said. When asked why he didn't notice the attacker approaching, Kelso smirked and replied, I was concentrating on other things. Although it explained the CCTV and forensic evidence, none of the jury members are buying Kelso's story. There was overwhelming evidence that Huxley was sexually interested in women and nothing to suggest he ever desired men. The prosecutor told the jury that Kelso's violent fantasy about murder were a prophecy carried out on Huxley. Kelso had stalked his victim back to their home. He waited 20 minutes outside before entering the apartment through the front door which was left unlocked. He entered Morgan's room and found the man asleep. Kelso jumped on the bed, pulled down Morgan's shorts and groped him before Huxley woke up in a panic, trying to fight off his attacker in the dark. Kelso reached for his shoulder bag, which contained his chef's apron, jacket, Yu-Gi-Oh trading cards, and a large Japanese steel kitchen knife. He stabbed Huxley to death, then stole his phone and fled the scene. He returned to his home, changed into his pyjamas, and calmly listened to the ambulance and police sirens in the distance while playing his PlayStation Vita as if nothing had happened. On March 18, after two and a half hours of deliberation, the jury found Daniel Kelso guilty of the murder and indecent assault of Morgan Huxley. He would be sentenced to a minimum of 30 years in prison. The judge would state, This is the most chilling case of murder. Whether the offender killed for the thrill of it, or as a result of a fantasy or obsession, I'm unable to say. It was utterly senseless and needless. It must have been the doing of a very disturbed individual. Kelso remained calm during the sentencing remarks and smiled when the judge referred to his superior intelligence. A couple of weeks before he was sentenced, Kelso was visited by a psychiatrist. He was upbeat and polite, not something she expected from someone facing a life sentence. She asked him to define the word terminate, to which he replied, to kill, to completely extinguish the life source. The usual response from violent criminals is a simple, to end, or to stop. Kelso told another doctor, I don't get angry, I go into a rage. 